another video. Today I've got both the cars with me. I've got my Bar 500 and Ben's Twingo RS Gordini. Um, as I said in my last video, I'm going to do a little comparison video of the two. The way it's going to work is I'm going to do a point system. We're going to do it under different categories. So we're going to have best looking car, in my opinion obviously, and I might get the opinions of some of the people who are with me. Uh, we're going to go best sounding car, performance wise, which one's the best, running costs and interior quality and just niceness. But um, what I'll do is I'll just quickly show you around the cars again, because just to refresh your mind if you didn't watch the last video. But um, yeah, let's get on to that. <laughs> Here I've parked in a bit of a dip and where the car's so stiff, this wheel is actually off of the ground, like you can rock the whole car and the wheel spins. It's quite funny. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is compare the sounds of both cars. Now mine's a 1.4 turbo, that is a 1.6 NA, so they're going to sound quite different. But um, let's get some clips of the exhaust and um, I'll give you the option to vote which one you prefer as well but let's go on to that right so that was the Abbas exhaust sound I personally think it sounds banging like I don't think there's a better sounding little hot hatch about Sounds as good as a lot of the big ones as well. But let's get on to the Gordini now. Alright, so which car do you think sounds better? I'm pretty sure it's the Abarth. It has got an aftermarket exhaust, but to be fair, these sound good stock anyway. So I think that's one nil to the above. Right, so now we're on to looks. I'm going to sound biased here, but I think my car's better looking. I know Ben agrees, don't you? Yes, I do. I think this personally looks a bit like a shopping trolley. <laughs> With the little spoiler on the back. But still, um, I just think this looks a bit more angry than... Sort of basic. No, it's deluxe. Yeah, this is vision white phone. So that is now 2-0 to the above. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, wait for a shopping tray. <laughs> Alright, so now we're we'll gonna talk about performance. Now my car's tuned, so it's not really a fair comparison, but standard, these cars are very similar. That's 135 brake, that's 133 brake. The main difference will be torque, because this is a lot more torquey. I can't remember the figures off the top of my head but that's a lot more talky than that. Um, they weigh fairly similar weights. 155? 1,055 kilos? Something like that. 1,035 kilos. So this one's a little bit lighter. So I'll show you some clips of us going for a little rag and you can see the performance difference in the two cars. <laughs> and standard that is a quicker car as well but this still keeps up well and handling wise this is a lot of fun and it does chuck into corn as well and it it's a nice little chassis it's, I think handling wise they're pretty evenly matched and I love both of them mine's a bit different because it's got the cage in the back or the bar in the back and no rear seat so it's lighter a bit more nimble around the corners but yeah overall they're standard cars corner in they're fairly evenly matched but performance like speed wise the above is a faster car so that is 3-0 to the above right so now we're going to talk about the running costs of the cars now 
row tax, that's £195. So the above is actually cheaper, it's 180 So that's one thing with that. Um, mine may have a smaller engine, but that is actually better on fuel, because if you drive it sensibly, it will actually get good miles going, because it's a 1.6, it doesn't have to work as hard. My engine is on boost all the time, it's very hard to drive it off boost, so yeah, it just drinks fuel. But um, tyres for mine are more expensive, they're cheaper for this. Um, don't know about servicing, but a bath servicing is fairly expensive. Um, brakes, these are cheaper than mine. Overall, that car is cheaper to run, so that makes it 3 1 to the above. Twingo's got a point now. Now we're going to talk about practicality. Um, obviously, you don't buy these cars to be practical, really, they're not the most practical of cars, but um, it obviously plays some kind of element. Now, if we have a look at my boot, I haven't got back seats, but normally the seats come to here. So anything pretty much behind the bar is what the boot is. It's very small and the, the hat is actually quite intrusive. So the boot is tiny and rear space for passengers was very, very limited. But I think in the front, there's actually a decent amount of room. It doesn't feel particularly crowded. Um, if we take a look at the Twingo, it is again, fairly roomy in the front. In the back, this is where it gets interesting. So. He's got a load of shit in here, but so the boot doesn't look that big, but you can pull this and you can actually move the seats forward, which gives you a lot more boot space, which is quite a cool feature. And when you have the seats quite far back, there's actually a lot of re legroom in the back and it's actually quite a comfortable car. They're both only four seat cars because they're very small, but overall I think the Twingo rings on the practicality because these adjustable rear seats are quite clever and they make it more usable if you need that little bit extra boot space. So that's free too. The Twingo's catching up. Alright, so now we're going to talk interiors. Which one's got the better interior? Now, my personal opinion, I think the Abarth's interior is nicer. Um, it just feels a bit more well built and I prefer the red leather and I like the, the things that I've done to it, like the Apple CarPlay, it just makes it nicer. Yeah. And I do just prefer this. The Gordini is nice, it's, it's better inside than a standard one, but there are some bits of trim that feel a bit cheaper, it doesn't feel as well put together. But they it's are French, quite different. It is French, exactly. That's Italian, it's not much better. It sounds cool though. Yeah, overall I think this does have a better built and nicer interior, so that makes it 4-2 to the above. Oh my god, there's a spidey. Spidey, not spider. Alright, so, we've done all the things we said we would, and the Abarth wins, but it's 4 to the Abarth, but I think this is genuinely a good little car as well. Um, let me know what you prefer and what you think the score should be in the comments, and um, give it a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe, uh, let me know if you want to see any more videos of these cars, if you've got any ideas of what we can do. Um, that's about it for today's video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Bye.